Inside this crate is the Mi TV Lux Transparent Edition, a 10 year anniversary product from Xiaomi that is only available in China and that they are not seeding to the media, presumably because it's really stupid. I mean, who out there was thinking, gee, if only my TV was transparent so I could see all the things behind it instead of the content on the screen. It's priced at a whopping 7,200 US dollars and I bought it so that I can share with you guys just how bad it is. And this video is brought to you by Ting. Ting is the mobile carrier that's customer focused and wants to help you save money by getting you to pay only for the mobile data you use. I gotta say, I'm really excited about this thing. There was shockingly little information available about it online, at least on English websites anyway. So full disclosure here, guys, I don't even know what resolution it is. $7,000, 55-inch TV here, folks. Uh, hey, Matthias, can I borrow you for a minute? I gotta get the crate off this big waste of money. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Andy, you around? Andy, you are my... Chinese translator, help me please. Like always believe the good thing will about to happen. Yeah, I mean, if I just, if I knew someone just blew seven grand US on something this stupid, I'd think they need a pep talk too. I think I've identified a small problem, Andy. Which one is the problem? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, is there IO? Oh, hey, there you oh, go. Yeah, there Thanks, go. Brandon. <laughs> I couldn't see that from here. Hi. Hello. Hi. It's the world's most fun COVID barrier. Transparent TV. Please don't break. Oh, this is a lot of pressure. No, I'm good. I got this. Oh, so much static. Ah, it shocked me. Jerk. Oh, should be careful with it. Sorry. Ow! <laughs> This thing is so trippy. Now, this isn't even the first time I've seen a transparent OLED TV. That was back in Korea when I was allowed to travel still when I went to LG's headquarters. And while I suspect that this is an LG panel because who the hell else is making transparent OLED displays, if I recall correctly, though it has been a while, this seems quite a bit more clear. I don't think this is the same generation of technology that that one was. Now on a normal OLED or a more traditional TV, you would have like a, a reflective or opaque back layer that even if you popped the, you know, the back off of the chassis uh, would not allow you to see through the pixels themselves. But here, every component of the pixel stack has been designed to be as see-through as possible. So the only thing you can really see, and you can see them if you get close, is actually the, the wiring, like the connective wiring between the self-emissive organic LEDs. I think that's about 10 pixels right there. So that would make, about five, that about 100. I think it's 1080p, because if that's about 100, there's no way that's 4,000. Did I just spend seven grand on a 1080p display? We've got 120 hertz support. And what's funny is in the press release, they actually talk about the gaming experience on it. Like you would want to do that. Uh, we've got a second with eARC support. eARC means that it has at least some subset of the HDMI 2.1 specification supported. Uh, third HDMI, then we've got a couple of USB 2. <laughs> USB 2 ports, really? Optical, AVN, so you, I don't think it came with the adapter, but you could put a composite or component or whatever that would be, probably composite, network, and then an antenna port. It says I 220 Google, volt right there. And their voltage is like 100 to 240. I don't trust, well, okay, I'm trusting you, but then why wouldn't they just put that on the product? We're gonna do it. You ready? Hey, there it is. That's definitely 1080p, man. Oof. Check out these pixels. Look at the size of these pixels. Oh. Well, I guess you can probably still see the size of the pixels. They're like yes. kind of huge. They're huge wow. pixels. 
Good thing we have Andy. Okay, so I pressed these buttons, but what does it do? Um, yeah, like, just have the remote closer to this thing and hold those two buttons together. And wait until you hear a beep. Hello? It's purring. It didn't beep. Lies. Beep. Is it normal when setting up a Xiaomi product for me to install their app thing and for it to try and install three gigs worth of other random crap on my phone? Uh, oh, that's uh, like third party app store. I get it. Their app is on this app store. So I had to get this uh, app store first. Okay, so why don't we try again? Yeah, oh, okay, so that's why it gave me a whole app store. Yeah. Okay, I'm, we're taking the tour. Yeah. Uh, but the tour guide doesn't speak English, so if you could... Uh, 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 settings. Configuration menu. No, this is actually my. Uh, okay. It's just like my. My HDMI input and stuff, you know. Um, TV. Recommendation or, yeah. Um, VIP. Porn. Very important porn. <laughs> okay. Look at that. Streaming to you all the way from China just standing here, I honestly kind of forgot it was a see-through TV and that's what I was supposed to be looking at. In a darker scene, I can see right through it, but yeah. and that's like because, this? <sighs> and that's probably because we have those lights behind the TV. Yeah, without that, man, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Okay, uh, enough of exploring the ocean. That's, I'm too wet now, I'm too excited. Is there, is there, is there a language yep. option? <gasps> language. No! Yes! Yes, confirm! Wait, did it work? Yeah, it says uh, like some of. third party app might not support English. Oh! But other oh. than that, you have English here. We English now, boys! Yes! They've got captive portal support. That's cool. I mean, Xiaomi does have TVs, so it shouldn't be that surprising that they've like got a TV OS that's reasonably fleshed out even if it's on a super weird TV today. So this has an always on display option with different styles. What are these? Oh, that's pretty cool. So if the idea was to use it as an impressive art piece in your like, you know, fancy pants home where $7,000 on an art is like, whatever, it's no big deal, I guess. And you could do like this or whatever. It just feels like I could catch the thing. Oh, oh my God. No way. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, MEMC would be motion compensation, probably, right? I'm not sure. This is English. Local contrast. Why would it have like a local dimming setting on an OLED? Okay, you can do your own white balance, tune your color, pixel adjustment on. Cool. Okay. Let's plug something in. That was so weird. So last time it said active signal resolution 4K, desktop resolution 1920 by 1080. What's weird though is it still kind of looks like crap. Also, we got a dead pixel. Dang it! Right in the middle of my Chrome icon. You say you won't buy one? Bummer. That's it? That's the deal breaker for you? The one <laughs> dead pixel, not the $7,000 hey, see-through? If I pay seven grand. It looks like you were right, Andy. I think only one of the inputs supports 120 hertz, which is super weird in this day and age. Like, 120 hertz, 1080p, it's like nothing anymore. It's kind of tedious switching inputs. Like, where's this the, like input switch button? I guess the expectation is you're gonna do most of your content consumption streaming. Like, is that the norm? Input lag honestly feels better on this input as well already, but I still don't see a 120 hertz option. Let's try, uh... Let's try doing it as a custom resolution. Watch us break it. I've seen displays get pretty effed up for like days from doing this. Curiously, it seems to be doing some kind of weird chroma subsampling nonsense. It doesn't look quite as sharp. You, can, you got like kind of a green fringing on these windows and stuff. Got another disappointing update for you, Brandon. Check this out. You can configure the display mode and the game mode does in fact improve the input lag. So that feels that feels pretty darn good. Unfortunately, if I don't want warm colors, it changes me to user mode <laughs> and it's mushy input again. <laughs> Why? Then, making matters worse, this is super annoying, I have another dead pixel! Do you know how much each of these pixels costs? You spent seven grand on a stupid 
clear TV, you'd want all the pixels to work too. Viewing angles are surprisingly decent. It does turn a little bit bluey, greeny once you get to kind of an extreme angle, but as long as you're within reason, I'd say it's pretty darn good. Let's play some video games, shall we? One benefit of the hockey puck approach is that the built-in speaker is actually not terrible for a TV. They say they support Dolby Atomos. Yeah. But I don't think this thing support HDR. They really? didn't mention, they did, at least they didn't mention it on the spec sheet. It's pretty rough for anyone who'd be stupid enough to buy it anyway. I think we've got a few more stuck pixels up here. Oh, those are sloppy. It otherwise looks great. We put a black surface behind it, so just like some black kind of uh, velvety cloth. And like, I can't even tell it's clear. I mean, it's not much of a feature when like, the feature is that you can't see the feature, but... Oh, hi, Andy. Hi. Oh, Lara, don't fall. Is she swimming? <laughs> Going for a little front crawl here. Conceivably, you could game on it. I don't know that I would have it in my press release if I was Xiaomi, but there you go. Let's try something more cinematic. Even at 1080p at this size, I wouldn't expect that much screen door effect but probably as part of trying to make the screen as transparent as possible, they actually want the pixels to be smaller. So you're gonna get more of like a, a noticeable grid in between them. Yeah, this is not a great experience, which kind of raises the question, what is the point of this? Who does buy something like this? And the answer, believe it or not, is pretty straightforward. Commercial enterprises. I mean, imagine if LTTstore.com had a display like that in the window. Wouldn't you want to buy it? Look at that water bottle. You can see right through the marketing materials. Pretty cool, right? So bottom line, even if it doesn't make any sense for consumers, if I was a high-end hotel or banquet hall or law firm and I wanted something really eye-catching in my lobby to make potential customers think that I was pretty swanky. Something like this could potentially make sense, even if it does come with a few bugs. Speaking of bugs, our sponsor for oh. this... Hey, wait a minute. Uh... Who, who is that guy? That's not supposed to happen. Oh my God, no. Um... I, they, uh, they stuck me in here. I hold, just give hey, me a second. I just... Hey. Shoot, I hate this hey, remote. I'm stuck in here. Uh... That's not the real Linus. Did someone? Um, no, no, stop. Hold on, no, hold on. No, I got it. No, no, don't turn uh, it off. I'm... There we go. Sorry about that. Ah, uh, just a weird thing. Bad firmware. Speaking of weird, uh, this video is brought to you by Ting. Ting is the mobile carrier. It's they're so weird because if you call them, you speak to an actual human being on the phone. That's right. With Ting, you get real customer service and you don't pay extra for the privilege. With Ting, you pay only for the talk, text, and data that you actually use, which is especially great if you've been stuck at home more than usual and you're off and on your Wi-Fi. Ting gives you complete control over your cell phone account with alerts and caps for each device on your account to keep your usage in check if you want. And they've got nationwide coverage via T-Mobile and Sprint. That means great network coverage from coast to coast. Almost any phone will work with Ting, and you can check your phone's compatibility at linus.ting.com. If you enjoyed this, you may also want to check out our video on the kick-proof TV from China. We really did not go easy on that thing. By the way, if you want to see our videos earlier and get exclusive behind the scenes, make sure that you follow on Floatplane. We're going to have a link down below.